Hello, this is Jim Maroney. In this uh, s part of the uh, series, I want to explain to you how the income limitations come into play for filing either Chapter 7 or Chapter 13. Now, to start this off, I'm going to ask you to uh, stop the film, take out a piece of paper, and write down uh, what you see on the screen. Uh, for each of those categories. Take a moment and after you've done that turn the uh, video back on. Let's take wages. Uh, we are going to take the current month in which you file bankruptcy and we're going to ignore all the wage income that you earn during the current month. We're then going to go back and look at the six month period before the month in which you file bankruptcy. And we're going to add up the gross amount of wages that you were paid during that six month period. So we'll take every paycheck you've got and just look at the gross column, uh, gross amount wage. We're going to add up that gross amount uh, for each paycheck. And after we've added up every one of the paycheck gross amounts, we're going to take the total and divide it by six. That's the number you would write down next to number one wages. That's your average monthly wage income during the six month period under the assumptions that we're operating under. In like manner, you're going to take uh, uh, gross wages or gross receipts from a business. Now most of you in consumer bankruptcy, you're not going to be self-employed and you're not going to have a business. However, there is an exception. Let me give you an example. Let's say that uh, three months before you filed bankruptcy, you painted uh, your neighbor's house, and he gave you a check for that for that paint job. You would take that one check and divide it by six, and that's what you would enter uh, next to gross receipts from business. So again, for every one of these categories, we're going to add up the income that uh, came into you, the gross income that came into you and then divide whatever came in by six. So for every one of these eight categories, we're just going to have an average real property income. Most of you, again, will have a, you'll enter a zero for this one. Uh, if you own uh, rental property and uh, your tenants are paying you money, then you, you would add up all the gross rental income that came in and divide by six. Again, we're not looking at any expenses whatsoever. We're just looking at the gross income coming in. Uh, interest, dividends, and royalties. Uh, there may be some of you that maybe on a quarterly basis you receive uh, an oil and gas check or some kind of a payment like that. You would add up all the uh, checks that came into you during the six-month period and again divide by six, and you'd write that number down for uh, the fourth category. Uh, the fifth category, uh, pension and retirement benefits. Uh, if you'll notice, we're not going to include Social Security payments. However, let's say that you have a uh, check that comes in every month because of your retirement. You work somewhere for 20 or 30 years and you get a retirement check every month. Or you're getting a disability check uh, from an employer. Whatever the check is coming in, you'll add up the total of those checks during the six month period and divide by six. Uh, number six may need some explanation for you. Let me give you an example. Let's say that you've got a roommate and they pay you two hundred dollars a month to uh, stay at your house. You would add up all the payments, the actual payments that you received during the six month period. Uh, if you're paid child support or, or maintenance you add up all those payments. Now, let me point something out to you. Let's say that your former uh, spouse is supposed to pay you child support of $400 a month. But during that six month period, he missed two payments. Well, you, for this six month period, only received four payments. That's all you're going to record in total and divide by six. Uh, the seventh category that you're going to look at or if you were paid any unemployment uh, benefits. Add up the gross amount of unemployment benefits you were paid and divide by six. 
The eighth category is a catch-all for any other cash or income that came into the house. Now, after you've got a total for each of these categories, you're going to total it all up. And what will you have? Under the formula that we're using, forget about logic or what in what taxable income is or anything else. It has nothing to do with that. We're just following a formula. You're going to take the total of all these categories and multiply it times 12. So we've come up with an average for each of these eight categories on a monthly basis and then we're multiplying it times 12 to come up with an annualized number. Now, after you have done that, what I want you to do is, is uh, take that number, your annualized income, under this formula, and you're going to compare it to what's at the top of this page. If you are a single person, uh, and your uh, number that you came up with is less than $39,563, then you qualify for filing Chapter 7. It's that simple. If there are two of you in the family, husband and wife, or maybe uh, a single uh, mother with one child, it, whatever is in your household, uh, those are the numbers, one through six, that uh, you will use to see if you qualify for filing Chapter 7. The vast majority of you will qualify right at this point. Now, <clears throat> if you're filing uh, Chapter 7, you're going to complete an income form called B-22A. If you're filing a Chapter 13, you'll file, fill out a form called B-22C. I'm going to complete those forms for you, but I want you to understand what I'm doing. So, uh, if you meet these income uh, qualifications, the eight pages in B-22A or B-22C, you and I are only going to complete the first three pages of that eight-page form. The rest of it, other than your signature at the, on the last, on the eighth page, will be blank because you don't have to take the second part of the test. You've already, you scored so high on the first part, you don't need to take the first, uh, second part. That is all you'll have to uh, be concerned with if your income is below these numbers for household size. Now in the next section, I want to explain to you uh, what what test we'd use if we if you earn more than this for your household. But for right now, let me mention this to you. If you uh, are late on your car payments or late on your house payments and you want to file Chapter 13 so you can make up your delinquent payments over a period of time, this, if you meet this uh, income uh, test, if you're below these numbers for the number of people in your household, then you qualify for a preferential type of Chapter 13. You can decide whether or not you want your Chapter 13 plan to be three or five year period. And the amount of your monthly payment is going to be at a minimum because for the most part, you and I are going to decide what your monthly payment will be. Uh, if you're delinquent on your house payments, you'll, you'll make up your delinquency, you'll make your regular house payment, you'll pay a delinquent amount, and a few other things that I'll review with you in the session that I've got for Chapter 13 plans. But if, if your income falls below this, then you have what I will call a preferential Chapter 13. Every benefit in, in, uh, that we can come up with, you've already earned because you fell below that income a requirement. Now, if you, uh, when you get through the numbers, if you've earned more income than this, there's a couple of things before we even go to the second test you might think about. Let's assume that during that six month period, that during the first two or three months of that period, you earned a lot of overtime. Well then, we might wait a month or two so that those two months fall off and two new months come on that won't include all your uh, overtime. So you might call that manipulation, but all you're doing is legally following the form. That's where a good lawyer comes into play so that I can look at those numbers and help you decide, well, maybe this is what we need to do. We need to wait a month so that I will qualify for Chapter 7 or qualify for preferential Chapter 13. Uh, 
that's an important part of what we're going to do. Now, let's assume that you have earned more than what these tables provide. In the next video, I'm going to go ahead and explain to you what we then do to see if we can still qualify you for filing Chapter 7. Thank you.